I wish more April Fool's jokes were real. We'd be living in a world where you can buy a left-handed burger, where you can get a university degree in the language of emojis, where you can watch dozens of videos of erotic corn. I guess we'll have to make do with catching Pokemon in real life for now. I spent the past couple of weeks trying to figure out exactly why I wasn't excited for Pokemon Go. I think my anticipation for it died down around about the same time that Pokemon Sun and Moon were announced. It's great that we're getting this Pokemon game on mobile devices, but I'm a little bit more interested in what the main series has to offer. Many months later, and having played Pokemon Go religiously, Sun and Moon can wait. No one at Nintendo, Niantic, any gaming publication under the sun, or even anyone who was legitimately eager for its release could have foreseen Pokemon Go's success. The simple act of being able to catch Pokemon in a virtual world mapped onto the real world has seen Pokemon Go break records for fun. There are a lot of things wrong with it, which is why I've made a mirror video to this which will be floating around somewhere, but what the game does right is very exciting, both for how the game runs currently and for the app's short and long term future. Sometimes rampant popularity doesn't align with quality. I don't think this is the case here. I think we've got something good. Queuing up outside a gaming store for the midnight release of a console is an activity that I've never understood. I like to think that most people buy consoles for the games and not the console itself, but maybe not? You do things in a certain order, you say, ooh I'd quite like to play that game, maybe I'll get something to run it. Which has done well with Pokemon Go because nowadays, everyone's got a smartphone. Apart from the fact that no handheld on the market comes with augmented reality features that you link through the internet, Pokemon Go as a game could only ever work on smartphones. The good news is that loads of people have these nowadays. It's not like it's a case of there being this exciting new game that everyone's playing that you need to take out a small mortgage to play. That is, of course, if you don't currently own a Windows phone because it appears you've been left behind. I'd say you deserve it, but I don't know a thing about running Windows 10 on a smartphone. Could be amazing for all I know. And there's another thing, not only is it available on a near universally owned platform, but for the time being it's also free. I've heard that Niantic plan to run ads on it later, but make a premium version and I'll happily help this tiny company grow larger. Lord knows they deserve it. So what does releasing a game on the mobile market get you nowadays? Eh, uh, a, a few things. Easier access, a large market of other apps to compete with, and something that benefits Pokemon Go to no end. Social interactions. Pokemon since its inception always had a theme of trading and battling with other people and while these features aren't quite ready to be implemented in Pokemon Go, we do get a blend of players from a variety of different backgrounds coming together to make life easy for each other. Back in my day, fellow trainers were only there to make your life awkward. And so what we have is one of the friendliest gaming communities I've seen for a while. I mean we still have these three teams that separate us based on our favourite colour or some shit like that, but even that is done in a jovial manner. Maybe because not a ton is explained to you when you first start playing and so there's an obligation to share any knowledge that might be useful, but you've got around 75 million people all moving in roughly the same direction. And there's some depth to this fanbase too. You've got dedicated Pokemon fans, you've got people who haven't played since Gen 1, you've got players who had kids who played Gen 1, you've even got people who have never played Pokemon before in their lives who want in on this big new trend, or just like walking a lot. It's not quite all things to all people, but Pokemon Go has amassed one hell of a varied following. And they're all nice to each other, when they're not defacing public property. Don't ruin it now. Naturally, as Pokemon has grown since 1996, it's moved away from the games that made it so hugely popular and introduced more and more Pokemon to the roster. To the point where if the last game you played was red, blue or yellow, checking out the most recent Pokemon game is a leap in the deepest of deep ends. So in comes Pokemon Go, a hugely popular application that crucially only deals with the first 151. Even then, who knows what's going to happen with those legendaries. The thing is that anyone with any prior experience of Pokemon can likely name a large chunk of these Pokemon, and only including the most marketable monsters means that no player feels overwhelmed. Not only that, but if Niantic and Nintendo want to, and I'm pretty sure they do, they can ease this revitalized fanbase back into Pokemon and slowly feed them all of the new Pokemon that they missed out on. 
and that works really well for making sure that Pokemon Go has plenty of free updates to keep players engaged. Better yet, it's content that they don't have to work too hard on. I'm pretty sure they're taking the models from Gen 6, so all that Niantic need to do is make sure everything's working well together. And as long as they space these updates out a bit, they're sorted for the next couple of years. I doubt that Pokemon Go is going to leave us quickly. The idea that many people left Pokemon behind after 1996 is based off the initial hype dying down and the series settling with a more focused fanbase. I make it sound like Pokemon is struggling to ship copies, but X and Y sold like hotcakes and in June of this year became the best selling games on the 3DS. It's not that the series is stagnating, it's just... I'm happy it's back on top. And so is Nintendo, holy shit! They didn't have a ton of influence, but what they've got here is an app with their name somewhere on it that's helping improve both their reputation and their share price. Right up until Nintendo said that they didn't make it. Even so, Nintendo and Niantic have suddenly taken control of a market where they had very little presence. Mitoma was a great pathfinder but lost momentum very quickly. Hopefully Pokemon Go, which I gotta say is probably the most suitable anniversary game that I can think of, hopefully this can keep going a bit longer. Seems like a long time since we were talking about the demise of Nintendo. Oh ye of little faith. So handheld gaming was introduced as a means of being able to take your video game on car journeys, in the toilet with you, even outside. No, don't do it. Of course, few people did. Backlit screens didn't come in until the Game Boy Advance SP? Maybe the Atari Lynx? I don't know. My point is, I think, that gaming's tried hard to make gamers a bit more active, or at the very least to go outside a bit more often. Pokemon Go has managed that without even trying. And yet it doesn't feel forced. It's not like you catch Pokemon by using a treadmill hooked up to a game console. Pokemon Go lays out the rules that if you want to catch Pokemon, you're going to need to get up and move around a bit, which also helps to justify the time you need to wait in order to trigger certain events since you'll be walking around and that is satisfying. And it feels easy! Just this week I went on a 4 or 5 hour stroll around my nearest city. I don't know how far I walked, but my legs were on fire at the end and I picked up some wicked sunburn on my arms. But hey, I hatched half a dozen eggs and can now crack a walnut between my thighs, so that's good. Especially eggs, they're, they're pretty much the single best thing about Pokemon Go. Actively encourages walking fairly large distances and you get a good reward at the end. This game will single-handedly turn every gamer into an Olympic athlete, mark my words. This remembered Luigi and Pokemon Go sounds even better when you compare it to other fitness apps. In those, you're praised to reaching a certain target, like, you know, total distance covered or reaching a certain weight. In Pokemon Go, you are motivated by the promise of Pokemon. And if you are not driven by Pokemon, I wish you luck with your bleak future. Hey guys, thanks for watching. It's been a busy week, I took on the mantle of trying to make two top fives in a week for the first time ever, and, you know, I, I didn't think it went too badly. It was a little bit stressful in places, but I, I'm proud of the two videos I put out today. Incidentally, if you haven't seen my more negative thoughts on Pokemon Go, there's a link to the video in the description below. And if general you enjoyed what you saw today, consider donating to my Patreon, where I'm posting video tutorials on how to make videos like this. Although I haven't made one in a while, I've, I've written them all out, I've written so many things, I'm just looking for that little bit of spare time to put it together. Bit of free time, it's a, it's a rare commodity nowadays. 